point. Two we didn't get, the two they did. Five men playing defense, not four, not one, five. Could never rest. Right? Jump up out of your splits. See, don't don't just fold and come up. Jump up out of them. All righty, try it again. Right, 25 free throws, 25. Let's hit them. Sports line, your question, please. Yes, I was wondering if Coach Seal thought it was about the same or harder to win on opposition's court, and if, you, if it's still harder to get the breaks. We hope that uh, our 16, 17, 18-year-old kids become a little bit tougher than the average 16, 17, 18-year-old kids and realize that when you play on the road, uh, that crowd is going to be, of course, a great uh, influence and effect uh, on your opponents. But uh, by the same token, we have that uh, advantage when we play here. And the mark of a good ball club is to go on the road and win. Coach, that's about it for uh, this week on Sportsline. Uh, good luck this weekend against the Pekin Chinks. Uh, let's get that third win. Sportsline with John Thiel has been presented as another in a series of sports specials by WGIL Radio Sports. Tune in again next Tuesday night at 6.05 for Sportsline with John Thiel. Coverage of high school basketball brings in more money than anything else on the local radio station.
Galesburg is the birthplace of Carl Sandburg, who is remembered here as captain of the Lombard College Championship basketball team of 1900, a short, aggressive guard, who as the result of an injury later turned to writing. Anytime they go into a double overtime, well, the only oh, thing I ever think about is the time we we went into the double overtime and everyone was snowbound. <laughs> oh. What and other events can you think of with basketball in Galesburg that when it's announced over the PA system that 150 uh, well, <laughs> is completely blocked and you can't get home and no one gets up to leave? <laughs> this is Galesburg. I didn't get up to the last game, but I've seen this one out here against D1, and boy, they were sinking it from outside all the time. When they start going back to 1916 and naming names like he does, <laughs> who played uh, what game, what day in 1916, I'm lost. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of Don't take me that far back. Well, I notice now they're even beginning to bring infants to the games, which I've never seen before. You know, they're, they're starting them younger. Every well, year. you can't find a sitter. How about the uh, Collinsville? Is Collinsville as strong as they, uh, as they appear to be in the rating? They're rated number one, and yet East Moline beats them. Hank says, is there isn't enough uh, material at Quincy? That's a big line. You know Hank, so. Hey, well, when did we play Hank, Collinsville? Hank, you know two, years ago, two years ago. Two years ago. And we went right through them like they oh, didn't even okay. stand there. No, we won it in the last second by a shot by Dale Kelly, wasn't it? No, we went through Collinsville. Oh, like we did. Uh, 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 we played Hank, 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 Hank stated this morning. Cheryl uh, stated this morning. You know, the thing that I think is amazing about uh, John Theo is the fact that he can bring these, uh, these boys up. This boy that played the other night, this tall Mason, Mason, Mason. Mason. Yeah. he had no previous no. junior high training, so and he you. probably grew so fast well, that he didn't have these all legs. Did, Did you ever see his legs? legs. They're just like fast. But oh, he just. put him in, he put him in, and he, he came, came right through with the dip off. He took time out, put the other boy back in, and he got his job oh, done. Yeah. This is where we're always ahead, and we've got a bench that can get in an emergency because we had so many in foul trouble the other night. The other if you don't have some season tickets, you are in trouble. You're in trouble, period. Like when you move to Galesburg, the first thing you do is uh, you put your na name in for a ticket. Yeah. And then the, the next thing, you look for a house or a place to right. live. That's right. That's right. And you'll yeah. find a house sooner than you'll find a ticket. My sister goes out there and they're having trouble. They didn't even have enough Dude, room okay, to get yeah. in. Well, we got an activity a, ticket out. So that's a demand for it. The kids are even have to sign up three or four days in advance in order to get a ticket to go. Right. What kind of a uh, record has Pekin had so far this year? Same as I already read anything now, about Pekin I missed the game for the last year. They so they've they've played more games, haven't they? They've played more games, but they've lost one and we've lost one. Is that right? Well, they always so they're play. They're always two. good when they play each other. I mean, they're all up. Right. They're all up. And it's after after Friday night, I think they will have lost two. Will Galesburg beat Pekin? As they say in another department, We'll be back with the opening tip-off and the start of the basketball action after this message. and paid $1.50. So the tickets will cost $1.50. Sorry, that's all. Here we go. John to 
Kaczynski will jump against Dixon as this ball game gets on the road. Here we go. Galesburg and Pekin. It's up. Tip batted around. Controlled by Pekin in backcourt. Weatherby has it. Back out to Zach Thiel. Thiel into the lane. Goes up on the shot. Good! And a great move by Zach Thiel. Down court Thiel. Up ahead to Steve Smith. On jump shot off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound to Dan Johnson up the right side of Doyle. Three on two. Doyle got the right side, goes in, lays it up. Good! Mike Doyle! That is the end of the first half. This is Silver Street Basketball on WGIL at the half. It's Galesburg 43, Pekin 25. They're calling a good ball game. They're working it. They're working it tough. We got to keep them off the boards a little bit more. When they shoot, the shots are even. I think we've shot one more time in the ball game, but the whole difference is the defense. I'll tell you one thing, they're not going to die, though, I'll tell you that. But more important is we're not either. We're not going to die either. <clears throat> we played a fine half of basketball. But we got 16 more minutes to go. When we come back to this dressing room, let's make it the type of dressing room that's expected around here, right? Go oh! Up, bounce pass to Doyle on the layup. Good! He can get the ball. John Thiel is mad. made the call. The official closest to it did not make the call, and it was one actually out of position. Call your man. Now you're standing around with your 20 feet. Game's been over. I told you you're not going to play. Keep going up. Keep the pressure on him. That's a search. Relax. It's a bad streak. Let's get out of it. Good shot. Good shot. Don't hurry. It's your shot. Good shot. Good shot. Up the near side of Doyle on the layoff. Good! 75-55. Galesburg by 20. A minute 45 left to go. Here's Gray on the near side now. Peck starts down. Peck now to the top of the circle on the near side of Porsche. He puts it up too hard. We got 4,000 people that are going to do that. We want to make them happy people Friday night, right? Beacon's defeat was Coach John Thiel's 325th victory for Galesburg. So far this season, the Silver Streaks have won 13 and lost only one. They are ranked third in the state of Illinois, and there's confidence at the coffee shop, the barber shop, and the dress shop but they will go all the way. The people of Galesburg are happy, and it is to John Thiel's advantage to keep them happy. Galesburg rewards its winners. 
fringe benefits and extracurricular activities like his radio show have doubled the coach's high school salary. All he lacks is security. A few years ago, John Thiel ended a season with 21 victories and just four defeats. Some of the townspeople hanged him in effigy.